Marijuana that began midnight Saturday with a market that is eventually expected to outpace any other in the nation thanks to the millions of tourists who flock to Las Vegas. The state moved quickly after voters approved legalization in November, marking the fastest turnaround from the ballot box to retail sales in the country. But people can only use the drug in a private home. It still remains illegal to light up in public areas, including the Las Vegas Strip and casinos, with violators facing a $600 fine. Todd Ant, ABC News. A New Hampshire driver should have heeded the old advice that you can't take it with you. A minivan pulled over this week had furniture, bicycles, and boxes strapped to the roof and a wheeled basket dangling over the back window. Police issued the driver a ticket, and then they posted a picture of the van on Facebook. This is ABC News. The key to success? Keep it simple, especially when it comes to hiring. And nobody makes it easier than Indeed.com. Post a job in minutes, set up screener questions, manage your candidates from one dashboard. According to an independent study, five times more hires are made through Indeed than any other job site. New users claim your $50 credit to post a sponsored job at Indeed.com slash credit. Indeed, the world's number one job site. Terms, conditions, and quality standards apply. Daria Albinger, ABC News. From the KMET Weather Center for Beaumont on the Pass area, we'll kick off the holiday weekend with sunny skies at a high of 94, weather winds to 20 miles an hour. Tonight, it'll be clear with a low of 64, weather winds to 25 miles an hour. Sunday looks to be sunny, or high 91 with winds to 20 miles an hour. We'll have a sunny Monday with a high of 93. For Redlands, we'll have patchy fog this morning. Otherwise, today looks sunny with a high of 91. With the desert cities, we'll have sunshine at a high of 107. I'm Rod Tanner for Smart Talk 1490 KMET. The Banning Beaumont Cherry Valley Tea Party meets every Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. for informal breakfast and discussion. And they meet each month on the second Thursday at 5 p.m., all at the Farms House Restaurant in Banning. Listen to interesting speakers, learn about our Constitution with our free classes, enjoy friendly discussions, and informal dining. Come join us. For more information, call Glenn Stoll, 951-316-3843. The following is a paid program. Views and claims expressed are those of the program producer and are not endorsed by this station. Opinions expressed are not necessarily those of radio station KMET, its management, employees, or affiliates. Welcome back. Constitution Radio with Douglas V. Gibbs. Great to have you on the air with me. It's always great to see you out there. And... Um, you know, I'm I'm uh, sitting here watching uh, the news you know, on, on you know all the sources that I have, and real quick, just something I just came across. There's a new law, California law that that passed and was put into place last January, that makes it almost impossible to do book signings. I'm just now becoming aware of this law, and it will literally make it impossible for authors to be able to do their thing. What's wrong with these people? <laughs> uh, they're even going candidates. after authors of books who do book signings here in California. Unbelievable. All right. Anyway, uh, we uh, spent the last hour talking to James Simpson, uh, the author of The Red Green Axis, Refugees, Immigration, and the Agenda to Erase America. Very informative uh, segment. Alex, real quick, let's go to you first. Did you learn yeah, something? I, I uh, have noticed that some uh, wags now refer to modern-day revolutionaries as watermelons. They're green on the outside and red on the inside. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. And uh, as far as, as these two CIA station chiefs, I think it was two of them, definitely Higgins, uh, being tortured to death by our uh, enemies in, I think it was Lebanon. Uh, the, I love to hear the Democrat senators and Congress people uh, assuring us, uh, very condescendingly assure, assuring us that torture doesn't work. Well, yeah, torture doesn't work if you do it the way we do it, which is splashing some water in somebody's face. But when you start taking a guy apart piece by piece, uh, using 
flame and electricity and everything else that, uh, you know, removing eyeballs from a conscious uh, victim. Uh, even even somebody who's trained in the CIA, somebody who's who's got a, a, a life history of espionage and, and, and loyalty to his country, uh, you put them in that kind of a situation, they're going to tell you what you want to hear. Interesting. Alex, thoughts about our interview of uh, James Simpson? Or I not Alex, was... Dennis? Uh, that is Dennis? Yep, no, I'm here. Okay, there you are. Did did Okay, your thoughts about our interview with James Simpson? Well, I, uh, I, I like Jim. Like I said, the first time I heard him, uh, maybe two years back, uh, uh, to me, he just has a good cadence. He has a lot of good data. Uh, his presentation is uh, uh, almost intimidating, uh, very purposeful when you look at it. You know, what's going on is uh, not just a, uh, a refugee crisis. Uh, he goes through the numbers as to who's going into what country, and uh, it's, it's really more a uh, secretive, you know, or more outward even invasion. Um, and he's, uh, he's he's a good guy. He's a kindred spirit to uh, you know you and Trevor and so many of the other right. people. You know Alex as well. Um, uh, and I think the angle that he's taken, the insight and the data and the conclusions are rather uh, compelling. I just wish that him and other people would have uh, uh, some mainstream media time to put it out there. I, I think they'd be very effective if they could just break through the uh, muffling of the. Uh, uh, media, and th and that makes me think that the reason why the media doesn't report a lot on Islamic terrorism is because they approve of it. Uh, you know, j just recently, and and nobody has heard of this about this stuff. I mean, I really had to dig deep to find this. Shots fired into a car full of women outside a nightclub uh, in Cal Calgary, Canada, uh, by a, a Muslim, Mohammed. Ah, Kadir Abukar. Uh, you've got acid thrown uh, on the faces of women in London. And, uh, you, you know, uh, listen to this. There have been over 1,800, that's 1,800 reported acid attacks in London since 2010. 1,800 cases, and you're not hearing about any of them? Well, and how many Korea courts do they have? Last year, throwing acid on, on people uh, was. 454 just last year. Uh, that's over one a day. Maybe it's no news because it's just another daily thing you need to learn to live with in the big city, according to their mayor. Okay, and then, then you got the violence for the second night in, in a row in London's largest Jewish community, as Muslims have just been going into the Jewish community to beat and terrorize with machetes and bats the, the Jewish residents. Yeah, but you're not hearing unarmed. about this. They don't report it. All right, Alex, go ahead. Yeah, well, they're they're definitely unarmed uh, in in England. If they try to fight back with a gun, they go to prison. Uh, it, it's it's amazing to me that uh, that these people are able to do this stuff and and get a, a silence from the media. I heard him say something about the, the, the school system, and I'm, I'm looking in my notes from the book review today. Uh, Susan Sontag was, was mentioning the targets <laughs> of uh, the revolution, and she referred specifically to, quote, disrupting the school system, which furnishes the economy with docile personnel. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's been in my experience that they bring into the school system one uh, wacky methodology after another that does not work and cannot work, and everybody knows it's not going to work, but they keep jerking you around, and what we end up with is one of the lowest performing education systems in the civilized world when we spend the most money. Yeah, you know, it's funny whenever you mention Susan Sontag, and this is not the first time you've done it before, I always get a chuckle because she was one of my writing teachers back in the 90s. 
I don't know what she did in, in life to become so famous. She's wrong every time she opens her big fat mouth. She's dead now, but she's still got a big fat mouth. <laughs> well, I'm told she, she's a good writer, but uh, I'm, I'm not necessarily convinced of that either. All right. Well, now, so you've got all of this going on, and then you got War uh, Elizabeth Warren. We, at the very top of the show, kind of made fun of her. People will die if you repeal Obamacare. People die if you don't repeal Obamacare. I was just reading a story um, Yes, uh, this morning, actually, about a child. And I wrote about this. As a matter of fact, I posted it at, at 9.15 on politicalpistachio.com about a 10-month-old child uh, was much, much younger when uh, diagnosed with a disease. But the socialized medicine system in Britain won't let the parents pull the child out of the hospital and, and, and take him to a place where they can use an alternative uh, procedure to help maybe possibly save the life of the child. The death panels in the socialized medicine of Britain has decided the parents don't have a right to remove their child. It let the child die in digni dignity. It went to court and the and the the human rights courts said that the parents were violating the child's right to die in dignity by trying to save its life. Well, I mean, that's true. I mean, if um, you keep something alive, that means it can't die. You know, that's Pretty logical. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, then we got. I mean, that'd be like if you're broke and, and I want to give you uh, money. I mean, have, you know, I'd, well, we, I, I, I rob you of your right to be broke if I, you know, were to give you a job or help you out. So, you know. Well, yeah, you know, it's just just like uh, the Democrats have been arguing, you know, that uh, work, having a job, robs you of a right to, uh, you know, Stay pursue home. things like, you know, certain things. So that's how they defend welfare. Um, then in California, the socialized medicine bill got killed. Did you know that? And Assembly Speaker Rendon, he was the one to announce it and talk about it and, you know, hey, it's, it's dead. And he's been getting death threats over it. Thoughts? I need more information. You need more information. Okay, let's give you some more information. According to the uh, KCRA Channel 3, a heated rally uh, last Wednesday brought dozens of supporters of universal health care to the Capitol. Many were holding signs showing the California state bear getting stabbed in the back. The violent symbol was a direct message to California Assembly Speaker Anthony Rendon, who was also the target of death threats. Rendon, Rendon, shame on you, protesters shouted outside Governor, Governor Jerry Brown's office, action now on 562, which is the socialized medicine bill that uh, would cost three times our budget and uh, they have no way of paying for it. The protesters are angry at Rendon for canceling an assembly vote on Senate Bill 562, a single-payer plan that would have required the state government to pay the health care costs for all California residents. Robert Kruger of Grass Valley was one of the protesters holding a sign with a stabbed bear. We feel like he's stabbing the Californian citizens in the back, Kruger said. Kruger and many others are upset because Rendon scuttled the assembly vote after it had breezed through the state Senate. It's a program that has a price tag of up to $400 billion, and there's no identified funding source for this, Rendon said Wednesday. He said the single-payer health care bill is more than double the entire California state budget. It's really triple. Rendon said he received death threats on social media. You just killed my son. This means war, one post said. Burn him at the stake, another post read. Third message warned Rendon, this is a good way to get guillotined in a public square. I'm not terrifically surprised by that, Rendon said. I'm a little bit surprised that they threatened my family. By the way, Rendon is a Democrat. So they're going after their own here. It's troubling, he added, but again, it's par for the course. I think it's more troubling to read that someone whose family is sick and they aren't going to receive coverage. Rendon said he understands the public anger. I realize that people are suffering right now. I realize that people are scared. I realize that people are uncertain about the future. Rendon also said the bill sponsors are misleading the people of California. So the liberal left is so violent and foaming at the mouth rabbit that they are now even willing to go after their own if the communist agenda is not put into place now. 
Now, as a conservative and a constitutionalist, especially one in the public eye, threats by the liberal left against me is a common occurrence. Uh, my hate mail folder is a pretty fat one. Uh, but uh, I'm not the only one that, that it comes under these attacks. Melissa Melendez, my assembly representative in Sacramento, Sacramento, after hearing about how the media is crying because Democrat Speaker Anthony Rendon received some threats, revealed that she gets them too. But the media doesn't care when a member of the GOP is threatened, and then, and in some cases, the leftist Democrats wish for violence and even death against Republicans. Uh, then Melissa Melendez online showed one of the th death threats she got from a Dario Lopez that said, kill Whitey, I hate you things, just as much as you hate me. Why we meet in battle, may we meet in battle he here on your beloved USA. Let the street run red with your children's blood. Death to the white man. So, so now they're calling for a summer of rage, which is supposed to start tomorrow. Uh, and so while the, the left calls the political right mean, I call their desire to overthrow the government and turn this country into a socialist regime through threats, death threats, and violence, I call it treason. All right, now you're informed. What's your thoughts? I had a, a guy across the street, very strange situation. Uh, he and his, his buddy lives across the street from him. Uh, they have uh, Sanders stickers, Bernie Sanders stickers in their window. This guy's car caught on fire. He was coming home, and he pulled up, and it, it burst into flame. He runs to my house. He wants a, a, a fire extinguisher, and he knows I'm, I'm the kind of guy that would have such a thing. So I gave him a couple of fire extinguishers, and he and the fire department turned, put the fire out. And then he comes back to return the empty containers, and he says, uh, he says, well, it just shows you that you can be on opposite ends of the political spectrum and still get along. But he says, I, t I tell you the truth, I hate conservatives. I hate them. Now, here I am. I just helped this guy. And his reaction, as soon as he reaches down a little bit inside, is murderous hatred. Did he offer to recharge the uh, fire extinguisher? It turns out that Dingbat had two fire extinguishers in the back of his van, but he forgot they were there. So he gave me his old one. Okay. <laughs> it sounds like an, like, a, like an unbelievable story, but, you know, it's, it's just more of the same. These people, are, they've lost their mind. They've, 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 they've gone completely insane. I can't imagine how Democrats can pick up any seat in any future election. All right. You, you want to hear lost their minds and totally insane? Uh, CNN just had a uh, panel not too long ago about refugees. CNN's panel uh, was there to talk about the children that are trying to come to the United States and, uh, through, uh, and how evil Trump is, with his travel ban, is keeping children from being able to come to the United States. And so they brought on one of their panel members to explain how um, uh, these Syrian children and these refugee children are not really much different than American children. And do, would you like to know who that panel member it was? Absolutely. Elmo from Sesame Street. Yeah, because they all look the same. They just wanted to have fun, play with toys. They're out of their minds. <laughs> Dennis, did you hear about the Elmo CNN panel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you didn't so, hear my Elmo impression just now? Well, I guess not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's just, well, you know, here's um, the problem. That now, you know, now there's, uh, when I there's put an image of the panel on Political Pistachio, but to make sure people understood where I stood on them using Elmo on CNN to try to get to the kids and to the parents, I uh, added this quote right above their heads. The state must declare the child to be the most precious treasure of the people. As long as the government is perceived as working for the benefit of the children, the people will happily endure almost any curtailment of liberty and almost any deprivation. Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. What they're doing is Hitleric. What they're doing also is another example of how the left lives in a in a fairy tale world. They it's like uh, Bobby Kennedy saying that some men 
look at what's going on and they say uh, why, and he he looks at things that have never been and he says why not. Uh, that's their 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 brain. They, they uh, how in the world can you press for a political measure that costs you two or three times your entire budget? How in the world? Well, because well, the money will come somewhere. I mean, they don't believe in God, so obviously it's not coming from heaven. But they'll get the money somehow. They're already ninety-four million, no, sixty-four million billion dollars in debt for the for the bullet train. Hey, Alex, it's only debt. <laughs> it's, not, it's not their money. What do they care? Well, I I I don't want to I don't want to be that that bride. All right, now when we talk about the left, understand we're not just talking about Democrats. H.R. 60 is a, uh, a the Enlist Act, and what it would do if it were to become law is permit certain illegal immigrants, this is uh, the House of Representatives, certain illegal immigrants to serve in the military and grant them near-instant citizenship. So it basically targets the dreamers, the kids who came over here illegally by no fault of their own, as we're told. They can get in the military, serve in the military, and get instant gratification when it comes to citizenship right afterwards. Now, as a military veteran, I understand that having people in the military who may or may not have full allegiance to this country is dangerous. And if they only enlisted because it may be a path for them to become an instant citizen, it doesn't improve our military. It doesn't enhance military preparedness. It doesn't improve our readiness as a nation to defend ourselves against the enemy. In fact, it may potentially allow enemies of our great nation to infiltrate in, with these more into our military. But here's the shocker. The sponsor of this egregious bill is Jeff Denham, California Republican. What's your thoughts about the fact that we have leftists in the Democrat I mean, in the Republican Party, should I say, pushing this kind of leftist agenda piece of legislation. Dennis, why don't we start with you on this? Well, it's no change. I mean, it goes all the way back to one of my main gripes of uh, George W. You know, he had a, a Senate and a House, and he could have fixed immigration and all the rest. And what do they wind up doing? They try to do the McCain-Kennedy, you know, amnesty and, uh, you know, basically help launch, you know, the Tea Party and stuff. So, Republicans, uh, uh, there's a lot of them that that think that the only way the Republican Party can prosper is to throw out uh, major items to Hispanics or other uh, minorities. When really, what they ought to do is uh, stand tall, and they'll get plenty of uh, uh, votes to uh, win elections. That's been proven over and over. You know, drifting to the left does not help the cause. And I don't know why Denham and these guys just can't figure it out. Alex, uh, what would you think about yeah. serving with an illegal alien? We've already got a lot of gangbangers who joined the military uh, and continue their gangbanging activities while in the military. Yeah, uh, they got like, in because they like to kill. I heard I, that. I, I heard that a lot when it came to Vietnam. Well, you got a you got a situation with with. Uh, the, the military today, if, if we keep cycling in uh, people, potential enemies, people who, who are predisposed to, to, to side w with the other guy, uh, we could be in a situation where uh, it wouldn't necessarily be the entire military going over to the other side, but enough of it to, to, to uh, remove the effectiveness of our own military. That's what happened to Rome, I think. Uh, they, they had so many outside uh, uh, soldiers that there was nobody there that was loyal to Rome. Now, now there, when it comes to immigration, there is something good going on. Kate Steinle, uh, who was the San Francisco woman murdered by an illegal alien who had been deported multiple times, and was taking and was taking advantage of San Francisco's unconstitutional sanctuary city status. Uh, the Republican members of the House of Representatives have finally decided to do something about sanctuary cities, and they named their bill Kate's Law. And it's actually two bills, uh, Kate's Law, uh, 
which is uh, one would deny federal grants to sanctuary cities and increase the penalties for deported. The other one increases the penalties for deported aliens who try to return to the United States. Uh, only one Republican has voted against the increased penalties for illegal aliens. Um, 24 Democrats uh, joined the winning side and in approval of that bill. The other bill, which would deny federal grants to sanctuary cities, passed with a vote of 228-195. Three Democrats voted yes, seven Republicans voted no. So that happened, and everybody's really upset about Well, actually, they're not, because they didn't notice. You know why they didn't notice? They're too busy screaming and yelling and ticked off over... Uh, Donald Trump's tweet. You know, tweet. Tweet about Mika Brzezinski. They're so busy spending all kinds of time. Matter of fact, real quick, let me pull this up and I'll, show, uh, I'll uh, read something off to you. Uh, I, took a, I took a picture of my television when they put this on the screen. NBC Nightly News. Trump tweets, two hours, 57 minutes. Travel ban, one hour, 50 minutes. Immigration bills, 26 minutes. ABC World News Tonight, uh, a, a three hour, 16 minutes uh, on uh, the Trump tweets, 25 minutes on travel ban, zero on immigration bills. Uh, CBS e Evening News, two and a half hours on Trump tweets, 20 minutes on travel ban, zero on immigration bills. Brilliant. He's got them so busy beside themselves, freaking out. They're not even noticing what he's doing at the moment. Light of hand, ledger domain. Yeah, and at first I was kind of bothered by it, and then I and then I realized, wait a second, this is brilliant. He's got them screaming and yelling about how horrible he is because he said that Mika Brzezinski showed up to uh, Mar Mago, uh, whatever that he lives at Mar Lago or whatever it's called. Um, with a, a bleeding facelift. And they freaked out, man. They're all over it. It's brilliant because now they're, they're so distracted, they don't even know what he's doing. And he's doing a lot. Any thoughts about all that? There's a big new Brzezinski was, uh, worked for, for Carter, right? Yeah. Yeah, and the guy's a, a, a globalist and a communist. Yeah, absolutely. The guy is. He is never bad died as earlier this year, didn't he? Just like a month ago or something like that, right? I, I don't know. I hate to speak badly of the dead, but he deserves it. Uh, <laughs> he, 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 he was just a turd. Okay. <laughs> Dennis, any thoughts about. <laughs> about the any thoughts about the tweet or uh, you know I uh, I don't know if it's all that well orchestrated I guess uh, it could be I know that uh, DC is famous uh, I think both Republicans and Democrats to uh, dump a story you know uh, just before a weekend or something before a ball game before something you know so that it doesn't get a lot of press and uh, with everything that's going on. Uh, I don't know if there's an inside uh, uh, source that's uh, saying that, but, you know, I read your article, you know, before the radio show, and I kind of chuckled. I thought, well, maybe he is doing that. You know, he's just throwing out some more red meat. He knows they're going to jump on it, and everything else just is off the front page, and then it will be next week's news. What do you think about the case laws that are going through? Do you think uh, the courts will allow them to stand, or do you think it will become another court case? You know, I I have no idea. I mean, the, the courts uh, take so much that is really not their right, and uh, whether it be a state initiative, whether it be uh, an executive action, you know, uh, I wouldn't be surprised, uh, especially because it's in California, it's the Ninth Circuit Court, I wouldn't be surprised if they, they came in and uh, uh, said it wasn't legal. Well, but, the know, travel ban is an action. Well, of course, that go to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said, for the most part, it was fine. Uh, yeah, they'll do a full review in October. Uh, so the travel ban is an action, and the lawyers are camped out at the at the airports and all that. But yeah. you're not seeing the reports of the chaos. Why? Because they're too busy talking about the tweets. Now, Van Jones got caught on camera by James O'Keefe from Project Veritas. Yeah. Saying that the Russia thing is just a bunch of BS. Did you hear about that, Alex? 
They're yeah, literally I, I admitting him, they're saw, full of it. I saw him say it. What, what do you expect from a communist? <laughs> yeah, this is true. But now, uh, among one of the bigger stories of the week for me is that Tra- Travis Allen has declared that he is a GOP candidate for governor. And uh, in a race so far that has John Cox, which is neighborhood legislature guy, so I'm not real big fan of his, yep. and a bunch of people whose names are so small they probably don't have a chance, Travis Allen throwing his hat into the ring is a breath of fresh air. I'm just hoping that the Republican Party uh, rally around him so that the vote isn't so split that he can't get it. Well, I told you uh, in a side conversation some time ago, a week or two back, Doug, that you know it would be nice if somehow, and I don't know how they would do it, if the Republican Party could have their uh, some kind of a, a primary like in February, so that the candidates that really are so far behind in the polls would, you know, drop out. You know, the, the official filing period is the first week of, of, of March. But if all these other guys have already filed, you know, I mean, they legally could be on the ballot. But uh, I do think it'd be somewhat makes sense because there's no incumbent that's going to carry the Democrats. And you could have, you know, Gavin and Tony or whoever, you know, go one, right. two, you know, like uh well, there's, enough, there's enough of those. Uh, there's like four well, Democrats, and three of them are fairly big names. Yeah. And that could have split the Democrat vote if uh, Travis Allen can, can bring together well, the Republican that's, vote. That's it. Travis Allen is, is a very conservative uh, assembly member. I mean, he, he's like buddies with Melissa Melendez. I mean, they're, they're super. In fact, Travis Allen was the one that proposed the bill that California would shut off, shut off state funding to sanctuary cities. Well, like I said, you get so many uh, running. Uh, when I ran for Senate, you know, Republicans, Republicans got second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. The Senate run last time uh, with uh, Kamala when she won in the right. primary. The Republicans, Republicans got second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, and then eighth, but they missed seventh, I think. Uh, so there's enough votes there, you know, to probably get them up there. But, uh, you know, the party does not endorse now, which it shouldn't. You know, for the open primary. Uh, well, the thing is, now I'm running, wondering, uh, is the party going to do what they did to, to uh, Tim Donnelly and suddenly come in with some big-name yep. leftist Republican and pump all their money behind him to dislodge or derail Travis Allen's campaign? Yeah, I mean, when they threw in Kashkari in January, February, I mean, uh, Tim had been running for, what, nine, ten months, pretty much unopposed. Um uh, Right, and then they exactly. threw in Neil, and Neil campaigned through June, and then he retired. I mean, he didn't do anything that I could see uh, between June and November. His job was just to bump out Tim. Do you have any thoughts about any of this, Alex? Yeah, I got a tangential uh, comment, and that is that the president has, gee, it's wonderful to say that about Trump, the president has put together a commission to examine bo- voting rolls and to see if there's any fraud in, in uh, federal voting. Yeah, they're asking for all of the voter rolls, and California is flipping out over it because they'll probably be discovered to have all kinds of illegal aliens on the voter rolls. Well, that's what gets me is 10 states apparently are refusing to send in what is basically public hey, information. Hey, if nothing's wrong, what's the problem? Well, it, 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 it's exciting to me that we're actually cracking some of these nuts that have been impervious uh, to any kind of action up up until this time. It's, it's wonderful. Well, and I, I watched one of these leftists on uh, TV screaming and yelling, it's voter suppression, it's voter suppression. How is it voter suppression to try to discover if there's fraud? That's what you call liberal lies. Well, well, it, they, is. well they, they, it is voter fraud. suppression for them. It's the voter suppression of the illegal voters, which they need. Yeah, well, that, that that that's true in a way. All right. Uh, we are uh, at uh, 37 minutes after the hour. we got less than half an hour left of the program, and I want to get a chance to have you uh, do your thing here. So you've got is, are, are we the Pilgrim book? Is that the one we're still working on here? We're still on it. We're only halfway through. Oh, geez. Well, I shouldn't say that as bad because, I mean, you've got some good information about it. Okay, so name of the book, name of the author, Fire Away. Okay, it's called Political Pilgrim. It was written in, it was published in uh, 1981, 
Uh, it's by Paul Hollander, H-O-L-L-A-N-D-E-R. And uh, it's, it's one of those books that is just chuck full of information. You, 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 you can't stop underlining. Uh, I was talking about when Stalin pulled his political purge and show trial, and <coughs> like I say, M Marx actually said, history re repeats itself. First, t first is tragedy and then is farce. Stalin believed that there were wreckers, that there were monkey wrenchers and saboteurs throughout his country, and they were trying to destroy his progress. Well, th what destroyed his progress was, was his, his theories and his plans. But he, he used the, the, the lack of success of, of many of his programs as an excuse to go after his enemy. And uh, one of the things that he happened to do, just a uh, happy kind of go, go, happy-go-lucky guy, he eliminated the normal legal procedures and, uh, and, and put in NKVD, that's, that's uh, KGB, Troikas, which double stamped the indictments without hearing from the defense. Now, a troika is, it means three. They got three judges. They don't hear from the defense. They may not even see the, the defendant. And they just rubber stamp uh, death sentences. Now, Earl Browder's wife, Raisa, oh, by the way, that TV program that's coming on on the 11th, I think it's called uh, World War II Confidential. But it, it looks uh, it, the trailers look good. Uh, Earl B Browder was the was the general secretary of the American Communist Party, appointed by Russia. His wife, Raisa Luganovskaya, was an illegal alien from Russia, a veteran of the Russian Civil War, in which, a, as a member of a troika, she summar summarily condemned prisoners to death. If that were not enough to deport her, she was a high-ranking member of the Marxism-Leninism Institute and was sent to the Institute of Red Professors in 1932. Now, the, the, as I say, the American Communist Party, one of its major operations was getting passports so they could bring people into the United States and subvert it. A lot like these people call, talking about refugees and bringing them into the United States to subvert it. Uh, the, uh, by the way, Earl's sister, Margaret, also worked as an agent of the NKVD, as her, uh, did her husband, Harrison George. Despite all this, no one was deported, and FDR even par pardoned Earl, who was then in prison on a passport fraud beef. Now... It said in the book that this was a gesture of goodwill toward the Soviet. The head of the American Communist Party is released from jail on a passport beef by the President of the United States, who supposedly doesn't know he works for the Soviets, but he's doing it as a goodwill gesture towards the Soviets. It doesn't make sense unless you're sane, uh, in which case it, it, it might. Uh, but Stalin was... was afraid of a left wing under Trotsky, like I, I said last week, and a, a right wing under Bukharian. And it wasn't just that they had voted against him. Uh, the the, the uh, opposition had expressed the opinion that the temporary, uh, quote unquote, temporary wartime dictatorship had served its purpose. Both sides chided Stalin as undemocratic, listen to this, undemocratic and lax on corruption. There was fear that these tendencies may have accumulated substantial, substantial support among the working class by attacking the privileges and luxuries that the state offered to its high-paid elite. Now, oh, oh, this guest we had today, Jim, he was saying that you can't define Marxism. Well, it it, it it is not not a religion. It is not not a, 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 a economic system. It is not not a, an, a, a a legal system. It's all of those things, just like Islamism is. But none of these things 
is uh, sacrosanct. They're they're all about equality of 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 income until they're not. They're all about uh, no privileges for any uh, state officials until they're not. Uh, it's it's just it's it's a lot of it it it, it it's shape changing. This is a monster that can change its shape at will. Uh, when when. Uh, When when he when, when we talk about torture and and whether it works or not, uh, when the NKVD tortured these old Stalinists, they got a hundred percent confession. Uh, there there was no there was there was no question about it. In the meantime. I was talking about how Trotsky got murdered in Mexico City. And there, you, you, when you talk to Marxists, they always debate these things as if it was, it was, uh, there was any doubt. Uh, as I say, Frida Kahlo was married to Diego Rivera. Uh, of course, she caught him screwing her, her sister. And uh, that caused a... Uh, these people are, are, are alley cats. She was sleeping with Trotsky in order to set him up for a, for a hit. And uh, the, the, the hit that they planned, the machine gun attack, didn't come off properly. My, my point is that people say, well, Diego Rivera was, didn't have anything to do with the assassination of Trotsky. He was pro-Trotsky. Well, hey, listen. Diego Rivera, for the entire length of his life, as far as I can tell, was the general secretary of the Mexican Communist Party. In other words, he was in full favor with Stalin. No one who supported Trotsky was ever in full favor of Stalin. It's just, it's just ridiculous. It can't possibly be. Uh, in the meantime, the, 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 the murder machine... I, I talked to you last week about sunspot development research. Uh, it was judged unmarxist. Now, how in the hell can uh, uh, sunspot research be unmarxist? But 20 astronomers disappeared. Uh, in, in the meantime, uh, he just, uh, Stalin decided that the Polish were a problem. Of the 111,000 arrested, no, no, out of the, out of the ones that were arrested, 111,000 were executed. Their wives were sentenced to five years of forced labor. And all their possessions were confiscated. Now, when, when a wife gets sent to a gulag, the first thing they do is rape her. And it depends on how good-looking she is as to how often that happens to her. But it's part of the process. This is, this is normal for them. Uh, with nothing to live on, the extended families starved to death. And that's how Stalin killed lots of people. He didn't deliberately just uh, uh, have them killed. He put them in a position where they, where they starved or they froze to death. Uh, this incredible cruelty. Again, uh, I was saying last week that when you look at, at uh, Wounded Knee, you got a couple of hundred Indians were killed, and that's a terrible tragedy, and it should never have happened. But it, it, it was nothing compared to, to, to 300 Indians maximum. My lie. 500 to 750 maximum. These people, the, the people that, that we should be compared against, the people that we should be measured against, are the Stalinists and the, and the, the Maoists and, and the Pol Potists, the people that murdered tens of millions of people, tortured. Them. In, in Cambodia, they had metal bed frames, like you'd put a mattress on, you know, a cheap bed, and they would tie the, the citizen, they, I, I don't know, I get a victim, they, they weren't criminals, they were just normal people, but they would tie them to these beds naked and, and hook up wires to them and electrify the bed. And they had a sign on the wall that said, don't scream, it disturbs the neighbors. They actually had that sign. They, 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 they bashed people's skulls in routinely, their major uh, method of, of execution. You go to any of these solid Marxist states, these communist states, 
People's Republic, and you see murder, starvation, torture. And what do I have? I got a guy across the street that's telling me he's a he's a a, 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 a socialist, and he hates me. What? Because I I tried to protect the South Vietnamese people from being murdered and the Cambodians from being murdered by the millions. That was what I was doing. What were you doing? Oh, you were smoking dope, trying to get even, get laid. Yeah, well, that's that's great. But in the meantime, millions of people died because you guys decided you were going to be. Uh, bigger and better than, than the, the system that you were born into. Uh, you rebel against your parents and you end up screwing up the whole world. doesn't make sense. Now, when, when we go back to the book report or book, book review next, next year, next, excuse me, next week, I, I can't do two things at one time, unfortunately. <laughs> there um, you go. We're going we're gonna to start in on the next phase. This phase that we've been talking about, these kids, by the way, like the, the app seckers and, and such as that, they were not rebelling against their parents. Their parents were communists. Their parents had been communists in the, in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, and they were the ones that got busted and, and on television, on newsreels, and they wanted revenge. So they, they encouraged their children when they went to college that they, they would cause disruption and uh, revolution. Uh, you got Susan Sontag here, your, your friend. She says America is a cancerous society with a runaway rate of productivity. See, before, in the Depression, the, the, the re- revolution was because we didn't produce enough. We did, there wasn't enough food. There wasn't enough whatever. Uh, except in, uh, when the thing got distorted. They, they had to pour milk out, but she says a runaway rate, rate of productivity which in, inundates the country with increasingly unnecessary commodities. This country has a surplus energy whose predatory overflow must be contained. Hence the revolutionary implications of dropping out and taking drugs and thereby reducing efficiency, clarity, and productivity of disrupting the school system which furnishes the economy with docile personnel of concentrating on unproductive uh, hedonistic activities like listening to music and, and sex. Uh, this is, a, again, the shapeshifter. The revolution didn't work when they, when they tried to take over the economic system, so they decided to take over the, the entire society on a, a bunch of, of lies that are directly contradictory to the last revolution they had. It's really quite, quite amazing. Uh, I, I, I think it's probably best to leave it off at this point, but that's where we're going next time, is a completely different revolution for completely different reasons by people that have no idea what the hell they're doing. and, and it, it, that's, that's the sad part, is that these, pe- these people that engage in these revolutionary activities, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. They're completely well, ignorant. All, all they know is what they want. And it's, it's just like, uh, you know, I was, uh, when I talked about, like, anarchists for a reason. Anarchists don't want anarchy. They just know that they don't want the government they have. So they create the anarchy, and then in the chaos, the people start screaming for order. And so who winds up taking over as the uh, rulers, the very, the very anarchists that caused the problem in the first place. That exact, that exact thing happened in Spain during the Spanish Civil War. The mm-hmm. anarchists started winning battles. They took over towns. They found they couldn't run the town on anarchy, so they became a, a Bolshevik dictatorial state, completely the opposite of what they've been talking about. It took them about five minutes. <laughs> it took them about five minutes. Uh, did you hear about the... Uh, uh, as we move on, did you hear about the uh, uh, Second Amendment case that went to the Supreme Court? Supreme Court uh, refused to take it, California Second Amendment case? No. And Clarence Thomas is very upset about that. And you and I have had this discussion before, and I know you're not necessarily always happy when you hear this, but the Supreme Court made the right decision. It's not the federal government's business. They're not supposed to get involved in uh, gun rights. Uh, that Their hands are supposed to be completely off of gun rights. Now, that said, 
It also means that the state's not supposed to interfere with our right to keep and bear arms. But it's not the federal government supposed to come to our aid. It's us. The problem is we haven't been doing our job. And then we get upset when the federal government doesn't come in to do the job that we should be doing. Well, we do, problem we is do you don't want the federal government dictating to your state what they can or can't do when it comes to your gun rights. Because eventually that answer will not agree with what you want. Uh, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm I'm the devil's advocate here. Although I don't feel very close to the devil. Uh, <laughs> far, far as I'm concerned, the Bill of Rights tells me that I have the right to keep and bear arms. And you do. And I do. And therefore. Uh, but but it's not the government's job to make sure of it. Because they're the biggest threat against that right. So why do you want the people who are the biggest threat against your right to be the ones? dictating to your state what they can or can't do regarding that right. I don't want them to dictate. I just want them to acknowledge it. It's already there. The law is there. Well, well you're dealing with government here. So first of all, they don't acknowledge. They dictate. Well, in, in my perfect world, they don't. They, they do what, the, <laughs> what is reasonable. And, of course, that's in, unreasonable to expect. But as right. far as I'm concerned, like I say, the, the, ten, the ten provisions of the Bill of Rights are... are sacrosanct. And uh, if they say we got a right to keep and bear arms, then we well, do. Well, you do have a right to keep and bear arms. You do have a right. However, it is not the federal government's job to dictate to a state on that. Because uh, that's like asking that's like uh, asking the devil to uh, you know protect your soul. I th- I just think that's too clever by half. You know, you you got you got the law, you got the guarantee, but you can't deliver the guarantee. What the hell's the point of it in the first place? Well, you can guarantee the guarantee, uh, you, or you can deliver the guarantee, but it's not supposed to be the federal government that delivers it. Who delivers it then? If the states won't deliver it, then it's time for the federal well, government. Well, then that. Well, then well, who possesses the right? The people. All right. So then, whose job is it to make sure that possession is protected? The government. <laughs> the people, because the government's the threat. I'm saying. I'm saying that that. By by right, the government should enforce the Bill of Rights. And you the Bill of Rights was the... not written for them to enforce it. The Bill of Rights was, was written to tell them hands off. For, yeah. First first words in the First Amendment, Congress yeah, shall make no law. Last words, Second Amendment, shall not be infringed. Uh, first words of the Third Amendment, no soldier shall. The words in the middle of the Fourth Amendment, shall not be violated. It is not an instruction for of them to guarantee anything. It's an instruction for them to keep their hands off of our rights. Our rights to belong the, to us. And they to have tell no business state, even being involved with them. And to tell the states to keep their hands off. Yeah, but the, the Bill of Rights wasn't written for that. It was written to tell the federal government. The states are under our control. So we're Again, supposed to make sure they keep their hands off of our rights. This is, this is too clever by half for me. Uh, All I'm, right. I'm, well, I'm, and James Madison in, in uh, Federalist 45, and I write this down. I want you to write this down and all you listeners, but especially you, Alex. Federalist number 45 by James Madison. And it explains what the authorities are and what the states can do and what the federal government can do. And there is a difference. All right. Uh, real quick, because uh, and, and sorry, Dennis, I was going to bring you in on that, but I got one more thing I want to talk about real quick, and that's Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon has been Trump's right-hand man, and ever since the elevation of the former head of Breitbart has been under constant attack. I was talking to someone not too long ago, and the guy says, well, he talks to dictators. Of course he does. He's Trump's right-hand man. you got to talk to dictators. <laughs> that's right? Like, that, that's like 60 Minutes did a story years ago about uh, how uh, a, a communist guerrilla married an American reporter, and she was suing the government because the government had, had helped the— I think it was the Salvadoran government to to take him out, and and uh, it, it 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 again, this guy is an armed rebel, and yet uh, we're supposed to respect his his marriage rights. With uh, it's just nuts. <laughs> well, you know, uh, matter of fact, uh, Steve Bannon's been called anti-Semitic. Who did he work for uh, at, at Breitbart before he died? Andrew Breitbart. Andrew Breitbart was Jewish. Uh, and then after uh, Breitbart left or uh, passed away and he took over, Jeffrey Scott Shapiro was one of the guys who worked for uh, Steve Bannon. Did Steve Bannon fire him? No, he worked with him. Why? Because they're working together. Well, would I, an anti-Semite I, do that? 
I got a I got a little off on my on my trail here. The point is that the CIA had talked to the people that took out this communist guerrilla, and 60 Minutes was demanding that they change their rules that they're not allowed to talk to to to, to killers. Well, great. You got a you got a, a, a an intelligence agency that can only talk to teachers and nurses and and uh, bus drivers. And that said, to... you got like seconds, so wrap it up. Conservativecanonade.org. <laughs> You're going to find nothing but wisdom and, and information. Dennis? Enemieswithinmovie.com if you want to know why the Democrats do what they do. Yeah, Dennis, you didn't get a chance to talk much, but I think you learned, you learned a lot. And then James Simpson was a great guest. I am Douglas V. Gibbs. DouglasVGibbs.com, PoliticalPistachio.com. God bless America. God bless you. And my friends, don't forget, united we stand, combined we kick butt. We'll see you next week right here on Constitution Radio. Don't forget, ConstitutionAssociation.com. Get your tickets. The proceeding was a paid program. Views and claims expressed are those of the program producer and are not endorsed by this station. Opinions expressed are not necessarily those of radio station KMET, its management, employees, or affiliates.